Hey people, so I've been meaning to do a combat guide for Civ 3, but honestly I've tried writing it and it seems like it would be pretty dry. So instead of that, we're going to talk about how combat mechanics work using practical examples of what makes a good unit in Civ 3, aka this clickbait list. Let's go. Number 5 on our list is the Warrior. Now I wanted to talk about strong units that you should be building a lot of, and this is one unit that it's really common for new players to underbuild. They should be a staple of your expansion phase. People stop building the Warrior as soon as they have access to the Spearman, which they shouldn't because the Warrior is such an amazing cost-effective unit. Obviously it's the weakest unit in direct combat, but when you build that Spearman at the start of the game, how often does it actually end up in combat versus the AI player? 25% of the time? Maybe even less? Units actually do a lot of things aside from fighting. Warriors are super cheap, and they're just as good at all those other things. Things like scouting. You should be sending out warriors earlier to scout. They provide military police. Warriors are also super cost-effective at fighting versus barbarians. And the formula that the computer nations use to judge how strong they think you are is based uh, is biased towards the warrior. And sometimes you just need bodies on tiles to, to hold the line until your good units show up. Warriors are great at that. Oh, did I mention they actually upgrade to Swordsman, too? Speaking of which, our fourth best unit is the Swordsman. So for people who don't know, combat in Civ 3 is based on ratios. 10 attack versus 5 defense is the same as 2 versus 1. Throughout the game, you will basically never get a better attack to defense ratio than 3 to 2. You get that at the end of the Industrial Era, and the end of the Medieval Era, and also throughout the middle and the end of the Ancient Era, thanks to this unit. But the difference is that by the time you're in the later eras, you'll be fighting cities with a 50% or 100% defense bonus. Maybe more if there's a radar tower. Swordsmen are super cheap, and they trade so well into everything. And also, there's no defense bonuses on the cities, because they haven't sit size 7 yet, and they don't have walls. The only thing that trades well into a big stack of swordsmen in the ancient era is another big stack of swordsmen. These things just stomp cities, they're, and they're useful to have around up until the industrial era. The only downside is that swordsmen are not mobile, so your ability to stomp cities will be limited simply by the distance that your stack has to travel. But the cost and raw combat stats that this unit has, compared to what you'll be fighting against, it guarantees it a spot on the list. The third best unit in Civ 3 is Artillery. They're pretty cheap, at 80 shields, and incredibly effective at what they do. They have 50% more bombard than cannons, and double the rate of fire, meaning they have two chances to hit. Each chance of hit to hit has a 65% chance of doing one point of damage to a 6 defense unit on flatland, and you can hit multiple times, meaning that they clean up if you have a big stack of them. But the crazy thing about artillery is the 2 range. This makes it so much simpler to clear through enemy cities. There's this strategy that's very effective on Sid difficulty, where you use railroads, settlers, and a doom stack of artillery to just plow through the enemy's territory, through their whole empire, in just a couple of turns. Because the AI is not programmed to focus on killing your artillery stack, you, you get shots off for free. You have no excuse to ever attack a unit that's not at one health ever again as soon as you unlock artillery. Uh, now, the only downside here is that because artillery don't have lethal bombard, you still need something to kill the units once you get them down to one health. This, of course, brings us to the second best unit in the game, and that's the cavalry. The mobility on these guys is insane. I don't know what prompted the developers of Civ 3 to put the strongest attack value of the era onto the fastest unit until modern armor. They trade ridiculously well into muskets because muskets are overcosted at 60 shields, while cavalry are a modest 80 shields. Only 10 shields more than the knight, despite having plus 1 movement and 50% stronger attack. They trade really well versus medieval units, and even the city defense bonus, even with the city defense bonuses you'll be facing, Partly because they retreat when they're losing, so you'll be able to save a lot of these guys even if you're losing combat. And they're useful in conjunction with bombers and artillery until the end of the game. The window to attack with them is kind of small, since it's not long before you reach rifles. But because they upgrade so cheaply from knights, it's really easy to exploit that window. And plus you can use them to clean up the damaged and backward sieves on the map, even if you're in the industrial era already. Cavalry are also underrated as defenders. A stack of six cavalry can protect an entire island with a dozen cities, because they're so mobile and they cover so many places at once. This helps you save on unit support costs too, which are a big issue by this phase of the game. So yeah, cheap cost, high attack, great on defense, and fantastic utility. These guys are the real deal. So, if you've been watching my channel for a minute, you know that the best unit in the game is the bomber. Hands down, it's not even close. 
They have plus one rate of art, uh, fire relative to artillery, meaning they can land three hits, and they have lethal bombard, so they can kill units outright from 10 tiles away. There is no counter to these things. Flax and fighters are supposed to, but they're just not good enough and the AI is shit at using them. Fighters are the first unit that gets hit when you bomb a city, and a single flak only kills your bombers 9% of the time. Get enough bombers and you will shred through every single unit in the enemy's city, including flax and fighters. You can also destroy tiles surrounding the city, if that's what you fancy. If the bomber was a unique unit, it would be stronger than anything else in the game. Stronger than the War Elephant, the Sipahi, the Gallic Swordsman, but it's not a unique unit. Anyone can build it. So I'd suggest you do exactly that. Build more bombers. Put them in a big stack. Keep them in air bases if you're worried about them getting culture flipped. Kill the AI, win the game. It, it's really that simple, guys. Okay, so I forgot to record an ending for this video, so I'm just going to let this segment of me bombing out the city play out. Enjoy, guys.